Welcome back to another edition of where we aim to bring you the finest, highest quality test instruments, the vintage realm. Today we're looking at the SP20D Multitester, circa 1990-ish. This is gonna be fun. So you might have noticed there's a bit of a resemblance, but fear not, this is definitely not a Sanwar. SP20D comes from a manufacturer known as Helles. I believe that's how you pronounce it. H-E-L-E-S. Tokyo, Japan. Helles Electric. And you know what? They're still around today. Um, really unknown, I would say, in the standard uh, North American slash European market. But they are a name in Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, basically Asia per se. And, uh, you know, hey, they're still around. SP20D was a pretty bare bones analog multimeter. Um, not much going on here. We have our DC volts resistance, AC volts, and a low uh, milliamp rating. Actually, you know what? It's not that bad. 500 milliamps, really not too shabby. They're also saying something about fuse protection, which is kind of surprising considering it's a cheap Asian knockoff of a uh, more venerable name, but uh, we'll take a look. Big Retro Tech shout out to AIO Inc. Thanks so much for sending SP20D in for this Retro Tech review. Manual is a pullout. Uh, really interesting use of paper and font. Um, it definitely looks like something from the late 80s, early 90s. At least they gave you a manual, even if it is a quick little fold out. Works for me. Test leads, by the way, are interesting. Let's just put it that way. Um, I don't like them. They are really cheap. One of the cheapest I have yet to see. Uh, they do pass the pull test per se, but I mean, look at that input. I mean, look how thin that is. And it's supposed to fit in like so, but guess what? Yeah, it just, it just comes right out. Comes right out. I mean, absolutely no um, protection. Imagine having a thousand volts going through here and, and this like, oh. Now there's a, 10.99 marking here on the box, so I'm assuming it was $10.99 uh, when it was on uh, sold, but you know maybe maybe not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's new or old, but there you go. So according to the SP20D, this is a precision reading fuse protected multi tester. Oh, now the meter itself. Um, I think there's a little bit of dampening on the needle itself. Not a bad display, not a bad, it's actually fairly verbose, which is, you know, really kind of nice when it comes to these uh, older analog style screens. Now you're gonna get a little bit of parallax because we don't have a mirror inlay behind the needle, but that's okay. Hey, this was cheap to begin with. Another surprising feature was the fact that that switch, selector switch, actually has pretty decent movement. I was surprised, actually I was shocked. Um, not bad at all for this meter. So what is that needle like actually? Um, well, let's take a look. Right now it is sort of resting right on that infinity marker, maybe a tad below it, but you know, not bad for out of the box. I have it in the one uh, ohm position and let's see if we can hit zero and we can't. And if we hit that, there we go. So we use the adjustable pot and oh man, look at that. It, there's a lag and then it goes to zero. Wow, interesting. Try that one more time. So I think part of this um, problem is the connectivity uh, with the test leads, but it does hit zero for a while. And then once again, the fact that these are so loose, it's really affecting um, the accuracy of that needle. For right now we're in the 10 volt DC precision voltage uh, position. And look at that, we're pretty well 10 volts spot on. So uh, surprising. Now I'm gonna put in a five volt precision reference. It's been heating up for a while and let's just see how we do with that. So five is what we want, which is that middle marker right there. 
pretty close. Pretty darn close. Not quite there, though, but uh, definitely in the ballpark. Now in resistance mode. And look at that. One ohm is what we're at. Just, just barely there. Let's try 10 ohm. And yeah, you can see we're not quite there, but pretty close. And once again, I think a lot of the uh, pinpoint accuracy is just the fact that these league, lay, test leads really have such crappy connectivity. So, you know, I got to say for a, you know, old analog meter. Wow, it's not bad. Finally, we're in 100K. And look at that. Look at that. Whoa. So, you know, impressive little guy. Last but not least, we're going to try AC volts. 120 is what we want to see. And yeah, a little off there. Not nearly as good as it should be. We are, as you can see, AC volts here. That would be 125. So, oh, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> Finally looking at current, low current milliamps. I have it set to the 500 milliamps here. And if you take a look, we are looking at this scale here. So we times it by 10 and the zero to 50. So 100 milliamps, pretty darn close. Now it's a little confusing, a little hard on the eyes sometimes when you got to figure out which scale you're supposed to be looking at. Um, but at the end of the day, this is not a bad looking scale. Pretty verbose and uh, easy on the eyes. The reverse side, the meter, not much going on. Not bad looking plastics though, I have to say overall the molding and everything else seems yeah. pretty decent. And inside the meter itself, well, there you go. Here we have our 1.5 volt battery. Now you don't need the battery per se, only if you want to do a resistance, uh, but there you go. The PCB is actually a PCB sometimes on these uh, cheap UCC wafer boards and what have you, but this is actually a, a PCB. So that is uh, a, you know, a decent thing to see. And we have a fuse on the milliamp side and look at that. They even gave us a spare fuse as well over here. Wow, they were feeling generous. No, I can't they? resist. I gotta check out that fuse, see if it's still good as a spare after all these years. Yes, it oh. is. And of course that one is too, so excelente. By the way, that needle mechanism is discreetly located underneath that paper overlay, just like so. And there is the internal that you can see how that coil kind of bubbles back and forth. That's what's moving that uh, needle mechanism. Once again, you know, I got to say for a cheap analog meter, um, it looks decent. And of course there's that coil spring, which is our current shunt. That selector switch, like I said, pretty decent overall movement, very fluid, very, Good control. Flipping that over, and there you go. There is our little spaghetti soup of resistors. Um, yeah. So, you know, once again, it's clean. There's the uh, the uh, trim pot for the uh, variable ohms adjust. Um, I'm probably gonna give that a little bit of a cleaning just because uh, hey, it's an old meter. Why not? But all in all, you know, it's it's good. Uh, Cita SP20D. Uh, what does that say? Fuse, 250 volt. Yada yada. So these are basic, basic meters. Uh, technology here is old as the hills. So you're not gonna see anything breathtaking, but you know, it is neat, it is clean. And uh, all things considered, I've seen a heck of a Actors. lot worse. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. Um, decent gobs of solder going on there. And uh, the gauge of the wire again, you know, it probably could be better, but all things considered, not too shabby. The selector switch right there, a little bit of grease on there too and just a really nice fluid move there. These are cool mechanisms actually. There's there's one ball over here and that's what's making contract, contact with all of those um, indents in the wheel mechanism. Applies a little bit of force with each different connection. Yeah, it's cool. I just love these old meters. If you've got one and you'd like to show it off, 
send it in, I'd be more than happy to oblige. Thanks for taking this trip down vintage memory lane. You, me, and the SP-20D.